Okay, so here we are in the woods at Martino Gardens. Um, for those of you who don't know Martino Gardens, we're a two and a half acre community garden in Edgbaston, and we are in the uh, the Slink Woodland, so it's a site of local interest for nature conservation. And oh, sorry, Sam. And we are um, going to be having a look to see what kind of mini beasts, what kind of creatures we can find. So first of all, let's have a think about what is a mini beast. So I've got a couple of cards here and mini beast is quite a common word that we use. So mini means small and beast means animal. So we're looking for small animals. But really what we're talking about when we mean mini beasts is what we call invertebrates. So that means they don't have a backbone. So insects are mini beasts, but also other things like slugs, kind of things you can see on here, snails, worms, spiders. So to be a mini beast, it needs to be small, but it's not necessarily an insect. So I don't know if anybody knows how many legs an insect has. Now, if you want to make comments, that'd be brilliant to come up. Um, I can't actually get them to come up on my phone at the moment again, um, but I can always comment on them later on. And I've also got Sam, our beekeeper, just over here, who is um, seeing if she can see some of them. So if, I, if we don't reply now, then we'll reply afterwards. Okay, so I've got a, little, a few little questions as we go around to help us learn about mini beasts, and we will also be looking to see what we can find. So my first question is which of these mini beasts are insects? So to be an insect, it needs six legs. It has three body parts, the head, the thorax and the abdomen. And it has antennae and some of them have wings, at least at part of their, their life cycle. So which of these spiders are mini beasts? So let's have a look at the first one. What should these mini beasts are insects, sorry. So spiders, are spiders mini beasts? See what you think, have a think, see if you know how many legs a spider has got. So a spider has eight legs. So it is a mini beast, but it's not an insect. Let's try ladybirds. So ladybirds, they do have six legs. So they are insects. Hmm, snails. Do snails have any legs? No, they have, we could say they have one foot, which they use for, um, for eating, but they don't have any legs, so they are not insects either, but they are mini beasts. What about butterflies? You can't always see them when they're flying, but butterflies do have six legs as well, so they are also insects. And the last one, wood lice. Are wood lice insects? Right, I'm not going to tell you the answer to that one yet because hopefully we will find some wood lice here in the woodland because there are lots of wood lice about. So, oops. Just before I start to look, I'm just going to show you this. So, this weekend there is something called the Birmingham and Black Country City Nature Challenge. And it's a challenge between um, cities all around the world, so different cities in the UK and other cities around the world, and to see how much wildlife they can find. So if you go onto their Facebook, which is facebook.com slash bbcnc, you'll be able to see how you could submit your record. So what you could do after you've seen our mini beast hunt is you could have a look in your garden and see if you could find any creatures and you could actually submit your records which will go towards Birmingham's total. So I think there's enough talking from me so let's have a look and see what we can find underneath some of these logs. So we've got a nice circle of logs. But logs are really good because they are damp and dark. So a lot of mini beasts like to live in damp dark conditions. And also a lot of them like to eat the um, like to eat the wood and they help to rot it down. Now just before I look underneath, I wonder if you can see this slimy trail on the top. Silvery slimy trail. I wonder what's made that trail. So it could be maybe a snail. 
or a slug because they make a trail of slime to move around because obviously they don't have any legs and it's not like a worm they don't have lots of muscles to use them to pull them along so they have to create this slime to move along brilliant okay so let me have a look if I oh, if I pull this up over here oh, and I'll come round what can we see here what have we got here so what I'm going to do is I have a paintbrush just a normal paintbrush and I'm going to get a pot Oh, sorry. You're all right. So I'm going to get a pot. So here's one of my pots. Yeah, do you want to just take that lid off for me, Sam? Thank you. Thank you. Now I'm a little bit in the in the shade here, but let's see if we can get the worm to go into our pot. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a tickle with the paintbrush. Tell you what I'll do. I'll swap the camera. I can see Sam there. Can you see? My worm. I'm not sure if you can. You can see me. Whoops. Oh, there's two worms now. I'm going to go for this one because this is my original worm. So I'm just brushing it in and I've put it into. Oh, that's me. I've put it into the pot. So it's not moving around very much at the moment. But there is our worm. So you can see. Maybe see its muscles, oh it's starting to move. So what I might do is just put the pot on this stump for a bit. Oh, I'll put it over here. And we'll come back to it in a minute and see if it's moving around. Right, what else can we see? Let's have a look. On the bottom of the log, what can you see here? So there are lots of these, and you might be able to see them sort of throwing themselves off, they're jumping off onto the ground. So what are these? Does anybody know what these are? So you can comment if you think you know. And I've mentioned them already. And if you saw our pond dip last week, um, you, we will have seen one of its cousins, which is called the freshwater hoglouse. So this is a woodlouse. So a woodlouse, I'll have a look at the one in my pot, here we go, that I collected earlier. So if you can spot in there, a woodlouse, I wonder if we can see how many legs it's got, let's have a look from underneath. Oh, if you look underneath you can see its legs, there we go. So a woodlouse has 14 legs. So you can see its antennae, see the segments on its body, see its little tails. So it has 14 legs. So if it has 14 legs, is it a, an insect? I wonder. No, it's not because it would have to have six legs to be an insect. Now I've got a little fact about, I'm going to leave that there for a minute. I've got a fact about wood lice. Well, a true or false. You can tell me whether you think it's true or false. So, true or false, wood lice drink through their bottoms. Do we think that's true or false? Right, I will tell you the answer. It is true. Yes, wood lice do drink through their bottoms. So they take in water through their, through their rear end um, and they need to stay damp. And they are crustaceans, so they're related to things like crabs, lobsters. There's a picture of a woodlouse there that you might be able to see a bit better with all those legs. Seven legs on each side. Well, I've got a bit of a delay. Sarah said true. Sarah 14. and Sarah. Yeah. Jane said true. Oh, okay. Got a Jane few few answers. True. Yeah. Right. I think some of these people might have been on one of my mini beast days, but yes, you are right. They are true. So there's a little bit of a delay from when um, when you actually answer. So, um, but that's brilliant. So woodlouse. It's got a D next to it. So D means it's a. It's not a carnivore. 
a meat eater. It's not a herbivore, a plant eater. It's not an omnivore, like an earwig, which means it eats meat and animals and plants. It's called a detritivore, D for detritivore. So detritus just means rubbish and dead things. So they really like to eat the rotting wood and they help to rot it away. So they're a really important animal in the woods. So let me see, is there anything else we can see under here? Ooh, what's this? It's very slimy. Probably what left that trail. It's got some beautiful horns at the front. It's actually quite a, quite attractive when you look at it in, uh, in detail. So that is a slug. So you find them lots in your gardens. There's lots of different types of slugs. Some of them like to eat your plants. Um, but they, well, they all like to eat plants. Yep, so there's a slug. There's another one down here. I might have to, um, oh, where's it gone? I might have to have a look and see what type of slugs these are. I think they're leopard slugs, but I would need to check. Oh, Sam thinks that as well, so I'm hoping that's what they are. There's quite a few slugs on here. Slimy slugs. Now, if I was doing a mini beast hunt with, and you were here with me, Where's that one gone? Oh, there's another one. Then I wouldn't put a wood, um, I wouldn't put a slug into my pot because they make that slime and it makes it really, really slimy. So it's really hard to um, to get it out of my pot. So I would probably just look at it with a magnifying glass. So it doesn't really work because it's a bit too reflective. It's hard to get it off your hands. Yes, hard to get it off your hands as well. So that's the. Uh, body parts of oh, there we go. So that's what the body parts of a slug look like. So it's got a hole for breathing at the top. It's got its mus muscular foot at the bottom. Slime gland to produce the slime. It's got its mouth. It's got a muscle on the top. Oh no, sorry, mantle on the top. So that's kind of the shell, really. Um, and it's got long tentacles and short tentacles. And its eyes are on the end of its long tentacles. So, oh, where's that big one gone? There it is. So it's looking to see where to go. But actually it's probably very good at feeling its way around without seeing very well, because obviously it's normally really dark under there. So I'm gonna put it back down again so it's nice and dark for them. And I'm gonna see if you know the answer to this question, true or false. Slugs don't have any teeth. Is that true or is it false? While you're having a think about it, while we get a bit of a catch up, we'll have a look underneath this log. See if there's anything different under here. Definitely slugs under here. Lots of, you see the wood lice jumping off? Lots of wood lice jumping off. Lots of wood lice on the floor. Oh, and what's this here? So this is a millipede, called a bristly millipede. There's different types of millipedes. We've got a bristly millipede. I'll show you one close up in a bit. Uh, we've also got some other types of millipedes here. Where are they? That's a worm. Uh, we've got a lot of people going false. Oh. Yolanda and Jane are saying false. Okay, so lots of people think it's false about the slugs. <laughs> Jane says false teeth. False teeth. <laughs> Let's have a look. Slugs don't have any teeth. That is definitely false. Yep, they have lots of teeth. They have about 27,000 teeth. More teeth than a shark. They're very small teeth. Um, but yes, so that's how they're able to eat all your plants. So slugs don't have any teeth. That is false. They do have teeth. So let's just go back to our millipede for a minute. So we had a millipede here called a bristly millipede. If you look, you can see how it moves. So they have segments of their bodies and each segment has two pairs of legs and you can see they kind of go in a wave, a bit like a Mexican wave. So that's how you can tell us it's a millipede because it will have lots of legs quite close together. Whereas this one, 
Oh no, that's a wood. There we go. This one here. I wonder if anybody knows what this one is. Oh, there's another one there. So their legs are much more spaced out. It's got long antennae at the front. It's got long legs at the back. Still got segments, but it's not hasn't got quite as many legs. So that one is a centipede. Yeah. So there's quite a few of those around. What was I trying to show? Oh, I'm trying to show you this. Uh, let me put my finger by it because I can't see it properly. Ah, oh, there we go. Right, so that, it looks like a worm. That's actually a different type of centipede. So, not the woodlouse, but the, the centipede there. So that's, um, I call it a snake, uh, sorry, centipede, it's a millipede. I call it a snake millipede because it's got a roundish body like a snake. Um, like this one here. I've just looked them up and it's something called Julita. Julita, Julita is the Latin name. Almost my name. Um, so, yeah, so that is a millipede, and then we have the bristle millipede. So, I'm going to show you those in a little bit more detail. So, let's put this log down. Um, oh, before I do that, I think I've got a millipede question over here. I think it's a millipede question, I can't remember now. Yes. Mm, okay. Millipedes have a million legs so just have a think about that so a million is a one and six zeros after it a million a thousand thousand millipedes have a million legs i wonder if that's why they're called millipedes well let's have a look over here at our one in the pot Oops, maybe tripped over a log so we've got a millipede somewhere. Right, we've got a couple. So here is the... Oh, no, that's the centipede, not that one. Where is it? Oh, here we go. So here's the snake millipede. The gelita, or gelita. You can see it's antennae. Oh, it's going for a little walk. So they move quite quickly. So it's got a lot of legs. I don't know if you can see them underneath does have a lot of legs but is that a million let's have a look at the other one let's see the other one right so oh, jane yeah. reckons false for the million legs and sarah miles and i'm saying false miles reckons a thousand legs Ooh. and then yolanda's saying not even a thousand i think between 500 and 700 okay well there's here's our other type of millipede why is that not going into focus there we go so that's our bristle millipede Ooh, kind of walking on the spot there must be stuck on something so again that has a lot oh there it goes it has a lot of legs so the answer to that one was false yet yeah, they don't have a million legs and actually milli in maths milli means thousand well done miles so milli means thousand, but it doesn't even have a thousand legs. I mean, they have between 40 and 400, but um, the ones that we have here aren't, because you get really big ones um, in Africa. So they're giant millipedes, so they would have probably about 400. But yeah, ours would only have about 40. And a centipede. So if milli means thousand, I wonder if anybody knows what centi means. Or cent. So, I'll tell you, cent means 100. So, somebody looked at this centipede and thought, oh, I can't be bothered to count all those legs. Probably about 100. But then, let's see, shall we see if we can count them? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. I think I can count 16 on each side. You might be able to count, oh, you might be able to get a different number. So six, two lots of 16, 16 times two, about 32, I reckon this one's got. Because the ones at the back are long legs as well. So somebody found a centipede and thought, oh, about 100 legs. But then they found a millipede and they thought, oh, well, that must have about 1,000 legs if this has got 100 legs. So there we go. So that is a common centipede. Or I think it can be called a banded centipede as well. 
So usually when you lift up a log, you'll see one of these and they run quite quickly out of the way normally. Because they're a carnivore, because they're a meat eater, they have lots of energy. So they're able to move around much faster. Whereas the millipede is um, a herbivore, it's a detritivore actually. So it eats dead plants. So that's much slower. So I've got a different type of centipede in this pot. So I'll put them in there so I know which ones I've done. So now, you might think this is a millipede because it's got a really long body. But remember I said that the millipedes, their legs are much closer together. Let's show you again with this one. Blurry. This one's a millipede, yeah. So their legs are much closer together, whereas this one, they're spaced out. Oh, oh. <laughs> so there's a pair of one pair of legs on each segment. So they're much more spaced out. So this is called a western yellow centipede. That was what I was looking at. Ah. <laughs> right. I wonder if our worm has done much in our pot. Not really. I think let's put the worm back because it doesn't want to stay in the pot for too long. Doesn't want to come out of the pot now though. Oh, there it is. So it will hopefully wiggle off. There we go. Wiggle off back into the soil underneath the log. Um, right, what did I find over here? So I think it was under one of these ones. It might be this one. Let's have a look. Oh. Want me to hold that one? Yeah, is that okay? Thank you, Sam. So, worms, centipede, uh, slug, uh, no, I was looking for a beetle, I found some beetles under this one, okay, oh, 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 oh there we go, there's a little ground beetle, a little, it's not that little, so a lot of these creatures, don't really move about very much they tend to play dead because if you look like you're dead then it means something's less likely to eat you so if you want to put that down thank you sir um i've got one in a pot over here so there is the beetle the ground beetle i'm not going to put my fingers near it because sometimes they nip you so that's why it's good to have the paintbrush to help you collect your creatures. Is that in focus? A bit hard to focus. Oh, here you go, it's going for a walk. Now I was hoping to find a stag beetle. We have stag beetles around here, but I think it's too early in the year because they hibernate. So I think they're probably still hibernating. Wow, I've never seen one. Yeah, there's quite a few around here in this area. We've sort of found maybe two or three at one time on a school when we've had schools in. They spend about three years as a larvae, don't they? Yeah, they do, yeah. They live there is a lot of larvae for a long time, yeah. Okay, so there is a ground beetle. Um right. I've just got a warning for anybody who doesn't like spiders. If you don't like spiders, look away now. Because there's definitely a spider on this card, but it's just a picture. And there was a spider underneath one of these, but if not, we've got one that Sam found in the lid of one of the beehives. Okay, so, just a picture of a spider. True or false? If a spider breaks a leg, it can grow a new one. What do we think? True or false? We'll come back to that in a minute, see if we get any, any responses. Now, there was one underneath this, I don't know what it is, a bit of tile or something. Underneath here, oh, it's still there. Oh, 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 started moving. There we go. So I think this is some kind of wolf spider. Again, oh, it's gone. Oh, it's just down here. So I'll put my pot back. But yeah, hopefully you saw that. Well, hopefully you didn't see it if you didn't want to see it. Yeah, so um, so a spider, hopefully, I think a wolf spider. So what I need to do sometimes, because I don't know what everything is, so it's good, so you can, when you found something, 
either take a photo if you can or draw a picture of it really quickly and then you can have a look in a book or you can look on the internet and you can try and find out what it is. So there was a spider there but there's definitely one in this lid. Where was it Sam? Distancing. <laughs> Sam's just having a look. So this is the lid of one of the beehives. Oh, it's music, so there's it? lots of spiders inside these. Oh, I think it's no, gone for a walk. A, there's a smaller one. Just take a look. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. The thing with spiders is they like to hide. What's a big one on where that's gone? And they also run very fast. Okay, that's alright. Not to worry. So, within that tunnel there. Uh, so, can you see the, the tunnels? We can see all the spiders' webs here. You can see in the corner, this type of spider would live in a little tunnel. They have very stripy legs. It looked like it might have been a garden spider, but then a garden it's probably more likely a house spider actually if it's one of these. The garden spider has one of those big orb webs. But no, no, can't see any spiders there. Oh, I forgot to say if anybody was doing their their bug bingo. So if you someone at the start say about bug bingo. Ah, brilliant. So if you if you saw um, on the Facebook, I said if you want it, you could have a go at making a bug bingo sheet. So things that you think you might find. So that was mine. This was one that a child has done, which I really like. So you can tick off the things you've got, um, or you can um, you could do a little tally. Because remember, if you want to to submit to the the nature challenge, then you could do that. Submit your results, do your own little bug hunt and find out what you can find and send it off to there. Um, but yeah, if you've got your bug bingo, you can tick them off. Or it's something that you can do yourself when you do a mini beast hunt in your own garden. So Daisy thinks true. Oh, okay. Legs. Rosa thinks true. Yolanda says false. And Jane says, I don't know if spiders can regrow legs. Okay. So, what was the question again? If a spider breaks a leg, it can grow a new one. So that is... What do we think? Oh, can't see it. It is true, yeah. As long as it's got another molt, because what, what spiders do is they shed their skin. So if when it sheds its skin, a new leg will be there growing back, but it will be shorter and thinner than the rest of the legs. Um, but it will um, it will grow back, and over over two or three molts. So every time they, they shed their skin. Every time it grows, it, the new skin is there. There'll be a new part of a leg, and so they will um, they will eventually get to the back to the same size. But that also depends. So if it's an older spider and it's not going to have any, hasn't got any more molts, so it's not going to shed its skin anymore, then it won't grow its leg back. But yet, yeah, usually, generally, a spider can grow back its leg if it breaks. Right. So I thought we'd just, uh, oh I've got, I think I've got another clue over here possibly, I thought I'd just show you a few other ways that you can find mini beasts. So it's really good if you've got logs or if you've got stones or bricks that you can have a look under because there's always lots of things under there it doesn't take long for them to move in. Um, something else you could do is you could get, I've got a tray but you could just do it with a piece of paper. So what you could just do is collect up lots of leaves, lots of leaf litter and if you leave it in there for a little while, so I don't know if I'll find much, but you can, oh, you can see a few little creatures, they're very tiny so I don't know if you can, oh there you go, there's a little something moving over there, maybe a springtail, oh yes springtail, do you see it bounce? Yeah. 
So that's something else you can do in your own garden. I'll just collect up some of the some of this uh, leaf litter or the bits of soil. Mosquito just landed on me, and you can see what you can find in there. Um, what did I find down here? We've got a nice fallen log here, a fallen tree even, got blown down by a storm a few years ago. And lots of things are living in there now. Something's made a hole here, could be the entrance to, I think there is a badger set around here. But I don't know if you can see it, it might not, oh, can you just about see, there's a spider's web just in the entrance there. Just about see it reflecting. So that's a garden spider web. Well, that's, that's the type of web that they make, so that's like a, an orb web. There's lots of spiders' webs around there because there'll be lots of creatures that they could catch, especially around this big hole. Okay. Right, well, I think what we're going to do is just have a... Well, you've dropped your hat there, Sally. <laughs> just have a walk down. We've got a few more clues on the way. Um, and then maybe just see if we can find something um, in the other parts of the garden. So we're going to leave the woods now. I'll try not to walk too fast because I know it gets jerky and bumpy. There are lots of little flies around. Hard to spot really. There's a bee there. Oh! Bumblebee. A bumblebee. Here we go. Oh, it's gone into that hole. Might be right. Oh, there it is. Ah, brilliant. Oh, there it is. Where's it gone? I can hear it buzzing. So what type of bumblebee is that, Sam? Do you know? It's got a red, big red back. I can't remember now. What colour was the last segment on his abdomen? Uh, it didn't it spot. White? It was black, I think. Black it had red on its back. So it could be... A tree bumblebee. A tree bumblebee, right. So bumblebees tend to be named by the, the colour of their tail, don't they? They're, less, they're not really a tail, but their last segment. So there'll be lots of things under here. We're not going to move these logs now, because I think we found most of the types of things we'd find under there. Let's see if we've got any more clues. If you haven't been to Martineau Gardens, or if you have and you want to come back, you'll be able to come into this woodland once we're open. And if you can spot all these... The bumblebees have got an orange door out, oh. so that's the middle section. Yep. So like this one. Ah, uh, okay. That's what it was, I think, wasn't it? A tree bumblebee. So thorax, the middle yeah. section's orange. Ooh. <laughs> So the thorax is orange, brilliant, so that's what that one was. Excellent, thank you. So I don't know if you can spot, the badgers have been digging in the path. They like to do that at night. Digging up worms, because they like to eat lots of worms. Right, we've got another question or another statement. Insects have green blood. True or false? Right, while we're thinking about that, I don't know if you can see... Hoverfly. It was hovering there. There was a hoverfly there. Oh, another fly there. That's the trouble with flies. They fly away. Oh, another hoverfly. Um, I've just put this down there because this is another way that you could hunt for um, mini beasts. It's awkward with the light. Um, that's right. So there's a. So I've just put a white sheet underneath this uh, sycamore tree so you could I could collect up some leaves again like I did before or what I could do is I could just give it a shake and it probably won't work now because I'm looking for things but you can get creatures that fall down onto your sheets oh it's going on my head now <laughs> So that's something you can try in your garden, maybe a little bit later in the year when there's a few more creatures on the leaves. You could use an umbrella as well instead of a sheet. Yeah, you could it? hang an umbrella in the tree as well, but it, best if it's a light coloured one because otherwise you can't see what you've caught. 
Okay, let's keep going then. So, did we find out the answer to this one? Insects have green blood. It is true. Yep, yeah, insects have green blood because they have much less complex bodies than ours. So they don't need what we call haemoglobin, which is what um, gives us red blood. They don't have any of that. So their blood is green. And you might see that, mums and dads if uh, and adults, if you've seen one squished onto your windscreen. Unless it was maybe a mosquito, then obviously it's been feasting on blood, so that would have, that would have red that came out. Uh, next one. A ladybird is a type of beetle. True or false? So obviously ladybirds aren't grey like that, are they? They are red or yellow usually, but all different colours with spots on them. So you probably wouldn't find ladybirds in the woods, you might find them in more grassy areas. Under there, a little fly there on the leaf. It's gone. So, a ladybird is a type of beetle that is true. Now, oh, I don't know if you can see this. Now, I took a photo of one of these, so after we finish the video, I can send, I can put up the photo. But I don't know if you can spot, oh, I'm in the shadow a little bit, oh, a butterfly. So this is a butterfly that likes to live in the woods. Ooh, not going to stay still. And it's called a speckled wood. A speckled wood butterfly. Probably because it lives in the woods and it's speckly. Can you spot it on there, on that leaf? Yeah. No, it's not stopping. There's a few of them around. There's two, three. Speckled wood butterflies, so you might see those. So I'll, I'll put up a picture of that one on the post after we've finished. Another question. People used to chew snail shells as a cure for toothache. So when they had a toothache, they used to find a snail and chomp on its shell. Do you think that's true? Or do you think that's false? Find anything down here? Sam's a nice primrose there. Have a look on, on the underside of them. Yeah, under these. It's a bit hard with the uh, the light in the woods. That's the only thing. Oh, there's a oh, yeah, butterflies again. Speckled woods. Right, I will tell you the answer to that one. It is false. I made it up, but I kind of made it up based on something else because apparently people used to chew ladybirds because they felt they thought that the the stuff, the goo that came out of their bodies was, um, oh there's a robin over there, not a mini beast but there you go, look how close we can get to the robin, oh, it's popped down now, now that's looking for mini beasts because they like to eat different insects, okay what was I saying? Yes, people used to chew ladybirds because they felt that the stuff come out of their, that came out of their bodies was um, a painkiller. Right, I think we have done. Irritant, well, yeah, it's... It looks like it might have pooed on you because it's yellow, but it's actually like an irritant. So if, you, if that gets on your hands, just wash your hands and you'll be fine. There you go. Okay, so that's the end of our walk around the woods. Now let's see if we can spot anything else. I'm just going to show you a different way that you can look for creatures as well. well I wasn't very successful when I tried it earlier, but you might be better. So we've come out of the woods. This is our pavilion. There were lots of bumblebees going into this, into the roof of the toilets, but I can't see them now. Yeah. Right, let's go down here then, onto the play area. So, so this, I'm going to try this in these geranium leaves, but actually it works best in long grass. Maybe try it over there. So I'm going to use something called a sweep net. 
Right, and I've made this sweet note myself out of a pillowcase. And it's gone a bit rusty because it got wet, but this is uh, just a metal coat hanger around the top. So I just stitched it on and then I just put some, um, some foam and some tape on here so that it wasn't too sharp on my hands. Right, I'm going to try and do some sweeping. Oh, hello. Uh, I'm trying to just see if I can do it backwards. See if we can see. Okay, so here I am with my sweep net. Okay, so you get close to the top of the grass, all the plants, and you just go sweep, sweep. Should we go for ten? We did six with the pond last week. We'll do ten and here. Are you ready to count with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you grab the end um, and then swap you over again. I was just going to put mine into a bucket. So I don't know if there's anything in there. No, not very successful. But you can put it into a bucket. And you can see... No, that wasn't very successful at all, was it? But there you go. That's something else you can do in your own garden. Make yourself a... Oops, what's going on here? Make yourself a sweep net out of a coat hanger and a pillowcase. Right, we'll finish off uh, by just looking to see if we can maybe see some bees maybe. Oh, Sam's got a hoverfly. Let's have a look. Oh yeah. If you can spot it hovering above her hand. Light. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There it is. So it looks stripy like a bee or a wasp, but it's a hoverfly and it doesn't have a sting, does it? No. I don't know if you can see it. I can't see it properly, but I think it was just so looking at us. The difference between bees and flies is the flies have got really short antennae, whereas bees have got quite long. So if you can see, oh. I don't know whether you can see the antennae on these because they do move about quite a bit, but yeah. flies have got very short antennae. Right, okay. So that's quite a way of seeing it's a useful way right. yeah Absolutely. and would would bees or wasps hover like this uh, they can hover they can. yeah but they don't tend to okay oh, there it goes it's Not gone as much as, uh, uh. oh it's our bug hotel here looks like you can make in your own garden for um overwintering mini beasts I think it might be some kind of fly. Oh, or is it a lace wing? No, not a lace wing, is it? Well, it's hard to see. Yeah, it's a bit hard to see because we're looking at the light. Could be a mosquito. It's got quite long legs though, hasn't it? Yeah. Oh, gone. <laughs> so, yeah, it's good to make a, a book hotel like this. is really good to make with lots of little spaces for creatures to go into. But the idea is you don't take it apart then to look for the mini beasts. It's really just for them to hibernate over the winter. So things like these tubes are good. Because you might get maybe some um, solitary bees might go into them. And obviously a spider's been around here. Aphids on this one. Ooh. little aphids. So you can check out leaves. Undersides are really good to have a look for bugs. So there's some aphids oh, here yeah. and here, and then just check out when there's little holes in the leaves and see whether you can see any caterpillars. Ah, excellent, thank you Sam. So your little aphids, so green fly. Aphids are just, just means they're very small little... Are they bugs? They're bugs aren't they? They're bugs, than, um... yeah. So they haven't got any wings like green fly have got. Ah. But they don't have to mate, they can just... Uh, lay lay a new um, aphid. Oh right, okay. Straight away, so uh, they give birth to a live aphid. Oh, so that's when you get them on your plants. That's why they you multiply. end up with so many of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, 
So uh, ladybirds like to eat those. Also lacewings like to eat them. I think we've got a lacewing. I don't think it's a live one, but we have got one that we found. Um, right, last clue, or last question. A grasshopper's ears are in its knees. A grasshopper's ears are in its knees. Hmm. Let's have a think about that while we walk around. steps. I mean I could look, I could check and see if there's anything under these, couldn't I, underneath these bricks. Ooh. Lots of wood lice. Different colours as well because it might depend because these shed their skins as well. So sometimes you see them with little white spots on them and that's the calcium that's used to make up their new shells. So that one there, I don't know if you can spot, there's a more browny one. There's the black one on the left, there's a more browny one on the right, so that's probably um, got a newer skin, so it's shed its skin. Anything different under here? Nothing under that one. Okay. I forgot what the question was. Oh, the uh, grasshopper one, yeah. Uh, that oh, I thought that was a little snail, but I don't think it is. Oh, maybe it is. Oh, yeah, it's a little snail. Something different. Oh, there's some ants down there as well. Any ants running about? There's a beetle just over there. And all this is look, it's just a brick. All these things were underneath this brick. So even though they're not going to eat the brick, it's still nice and dark and damp for them to live inside. Okay, so grasshoppers, a grasshopper's ears are in its knees. That one is true. Yes, some of the smallest ears of the animal kingdom. Right, so I'll just... Show, oh, the magpies are on the bird feeders. So I'll just show you over here. So we've got lots of flowers over here. It's a new part of our garden. Um, and there will be bees and butterflies around here probably a little bit later in the year. There's something flying around there. Because they want to get the, the, uh, the nectar. Or else the bees want to get the pollen. That's what they use to feed the baby bees. Uh, so they get the nectar because it's nice and juicy and that's what honeybees use to make into honey. Ooh, there's a few things over there. Um, what did we have in here? We had a couple of things, unfortunately not alive anymore, but what might be worth having a look. So, I don't know if anybody knows, obviously there's a woodlouse there. Anybody know what this is next to the woodlouse? It's got a long body. It's got six legs. There we go. It's got two pinchers or pincers on its bottom. Oh, why is it not going into focus? It's not working, is it? Oh, there we go. There's two pinchers on its bottom. So that is an earwig. And this one is a male earwig because it's got curved pinchers, pincers. Female one would have straight ones. That's one way to find out the difference between them. This is a hoverfly, just like the one that we saw flying. I don't know if you can see, like Sam said, that they have much smaller antennae. Yes, brilliant. Yes, you're right. It's an earwig. There's a bit of a delay on the on your responses, I think. Yeah, so there we go. Um, right, let's have a last look then. Yeah. Ooh. See, it's a good job I've got Sam here because she's finding lots of extra things that I wouldn't normally have spotted while I was walking around. So this is the bee hotel and there's quite a few different species here so I won't know all of them <laughs> before you ask. Uh, but there's probably uh, red-tailed mason, mason bee. So these are solitary bees, aren't they? Yeah, so, bees. so they're not um, bumblebees. So bumblebees are big fuzzy ones. They're not honeybees. So, 
what happens is uh, they're fighting over territory as well here. You can see them like sort of buzzing at each other as they try to get into their little nest. So the solitary bees will lay an egg and then pack it with some food, some pollen and um, wet it with some nectar and then pack it with some either more soil or leaves and then lay another egg and they'll have about eight um, in, in a, like a cardboard tube or a, a drilled hole and then they'll seal it up with leaves and some of them are sealed there so you can see some of them so you might find that they start hatching soon some of them and then the adult ones are just making new nests there just flying around so my arms with the seal would look there's one oh. there can't really see that one, it's a bit dark. Um, so not just bees use these as well, lacewings use them. Sometimes um, ladybirds overwinter are in there. And then spiders will go in there as well sometimes. Yeah, the one in my garden has got spiders web all over the front of it. <laughs> and these are pretty harmless, aren't they, um, solitary bees? Yeah, they, they can sting, but they tend not to. Um, like like honeybees or bumblebees they can sting but um, only if they're provoked really yeah or squeezed you see this one yeah, don't just coming out then oh yeah. bright orange <laughs> so you can always make one of these in your garden we did have one that yeah, somebody had made over here bee. red mason bee there we go uh, oh look, we had one here, it's probably a bit old. Somebody made one of these, so you can easily make one of these in your garden for them to overwinter in. It's just some canes or some, um, I think that was a plant with hollow stems, or just garden canes. And they've just put them in, um, that's just a toilet roll tube I think, with just some tape on it to kind of seal it a bit. And they've hung it up in the tree. I don't think anybody's used that one, unless there's things further down. None of them are sealed up. But that's something you can do yourself. Okay. Better oh. with a, a south facing wall if you can put your, if you can find out which way south. <laughs> um, possibly this is south where these are, so they get quite a lot of sun on there. Yeah. Um, and about head height tends to be quite good, uh, a good height for them. Um, yeah, so you can use them, you can you make them just using a pop bottle and cutting the ends off and then pop in the sticks in there so then at least it's uh, rainproof but it's, tend to hang them where they won't get rained on generally somewhere where there's overhanging trees so that they they don't get the full force of rain on them but yeah brilliant okay so yeah that's something else that we've seen now the last place i was going to look was by in our orchard because the um the trees are blossoming so with the apple and the cherry. It smells beautiful and um, they look beautiful. There's Miranda doing some work down there. Okay, so this is our orchard with our fruit trees. And this one, we thought that this, this one's going to die. Oh, there's a tree in there, uh, a bird in there. We thought this one wasn't going to survive because it was broken at the bottom, but actually, Beautiful, this cherry tree. No, I think it's probably still a bit, a bit shaded over here at this at this time of day for us to find any, anything. Nice apple tree. Any bees in there? Well, let's have a look at our last fact, or our last. It might not be fact. It might not be true. Bees have hairy legs and smelly feet. So those bees that we just saw, and the bumblebee that we saw earlier, and the honeybees in the beehive, do you think they have hairy legs and smelly feet? Have a think about that while we just have a look, see if there's any around. see where the bees go into the flowers to collect the nectar. You can see the pollen on the ends of the stamen. Oh, someone's found a bumblebee. Oh yes, now it's quite high up. So I don't know if you can 
can spot it. I don't think I can zoom in on this. I can just about. Oh, I can zoom in. There we go. That's better, isn't it? Possibly a white, white tailed bumblebee. Quite a big one, isn't it? Where's it gone? Hiding inside the flower, I think. See if it comes out. Oh, there's more bees up there as well. I can hear them. There's a couple of uh, honeybees. Yeah, honeybees around there. They're all at the top. Well, there's the bumblebee. Oh, beautiful. Can you see it going in there? So, I wonder if it's got hairy legs and smelly feet. So while we're having a look at the bumblebee, I will tell you the answer. It is true. So they have hairy legs because the pollen sticks to their legs. Um, and that also helps to spread the pollen between the flowers. So that's why bees are really good for plants. Because the pollen gets stuck onto their bodies and then it fly, then it gets carried to the next to the flower of another plant to help to pollinate them. And they have I don't know if you can see that honey bee. And they have hairy legs, uh, so hairy legs for the pollen to stick onto, and they have smelly feet. Now, if you went up to a bee and went and sniffed its feet, I don't think you'd be able to smell it. But another bee would be able to smell the smell that they leave behind on the flower. So they leave behind a smell. So that they know that that flower has already been pollinated, so they don't need to waste any time. Okay. So I think we're going to. Oh, did you find something else? Just. Oh yeah. Oops. I just knocked the tree. So it's got its pollen baskets full. Ooh. So it looks like it's got yellow rugby balls on its legs. On so it's flying off now. Oh, that one hasn't got much on his legs. Oh no, that one has got leg uh, pollen baskets full. It's a bit hard to keep them in shot. <laughs> right. I think we're going to finish now because I think we found lots of different things. So what have we found? We found. Let's put the camera onto us so you can see. This. Oh, something's over there. Two meters away. <laughs> so we found. Um, let's see if you can list them. Millipedes. Two different types of millipedes: bristle millipedes and snake millipedes. Centipedes. And we found two different types. We found the western yellow centipede and we found the common centipede. Uh, we found lots of wood lice, we found some red mason bees, some bumblebees, so we found a tree bumblebee, what was the other bumblebee we just found? Oh, we just found a white-tailed bumblebee, haven't we? Was it? Yeah, it would be yeah. white-tailed or buff-tailed, they're really or buff -tailed. hard to tell apart. Yeah, okay, so bumblebees, we found some honeybees, what else did we find? We found a worm, we found a beetle, uh, we found a little snail. We slugs. found spiders, yep, yeah, we found slugs. Brilliant. And hopefully you learnt a few little facts as well with our true or false questions. Stuart says, do you know why they're called earwigs? Oh, I don't know why they're called earwigs. Some kind of um, old wives tale, I guess. But, um, does Stuart know why they're called earwigs? Do you know Stuart? <laughs> do you <laughs> know, know Stuart why they're called earwigs? <laughs> I'll wait for your response because it's a bit, a bit behind. Um, okay, so Sam, do you want to say bye? Bye! Bye! So, um, hopefully, after this, I'm going to be um, speaking to Sam. We're going to have a look inside the beehives. So, we will post that hopefully next Friday at the same time. So, it won't be a live video, but it will be a um, it will be a video on the Facebook web on our uh, Martino Gardens Facebook. So, um, the common term earwig is derived from the Old English ear, which means ear, and wig, which means insect or literally beetle. The name is popularly thought to be related to an old wild tale that earwigs burrowed into the brains of humans Ooh. through their ear and laid eggs in there. That's not true. No. Earwigs will not do that to you. No. <laughs> And you, you, you'll be lucky to find an earwig because they're nocturnal, so you normally don't see them in the daytime, but you might see them just in the dusk, just before just before it gets dark. So if you want to do your own mini beast hunt, that'll be absolutely brilliant, um, and you can see if you can submit your results. So from Martino Gardens, we're going to say goodbye. Bye-bye. See you.